Hey everybody, how we doing today? So in today's video, I am going to do a quick rebuild on my 2018 Suzuki 6 horsepower outboard motor. Now, the way I got this was basically, I run two and a half horsepower Suzuki's. Guy was selling one, I went over there and bought that one. Uh, it was a sailboat guy that was kind of passing through. Uh, he had the two and a half that wasn't running. He had the six horsepower that wasn't running and he had just picked up a brand new motor for his little dinghy there. So he said, take this and get it off my boat because they don't have a lot of storage space on those. So then, all right, I'll take a look at it. Um, when I got it, uh, it was locked up. Uh, couldn't even pull it or get it going at all. Uh, I got it unfrozen, so I was able to pull it. Was not able to get it started. Messed around with uh, the carburetor, did the valves, uh, checked a bunch of stuff. And then I was finally able to get it to fire up uh, with injecting a bunch of oil into the spark plug hole but not getting it to run just to, to fire off so i did a compression test but you really can't do them cold on these motors plus they have a uh, compression reduction for easier startups but i did a leak down test and i was getting a ton of blow by through the uh the oil vent um or the, actually the oil filler so through the crankcase and then i was also getting a little bit of blow by through the carburetor as well so i figured oh that was a problem so i went ahead and pulled the head so i could take a look at the piston look at the piston and the walls looked okay there um, but i noticed that the head gasket was not installed uh, correctly it was kind of just wedged in there uh, on these motors you have to not only take the head off you have to split the crankcase in half in order to install the um the head in head gasket first and then you install the, the crankcase so you can't do just the head so I figured that might have been the issue so I went ahead and ordered a crankcase gasket and a head gasket put it all together try firing it up but it was the same issue I was still getting that same blow by so disassembled it again uh, this time I pulled the piston and rods and uh, what I found were the piston rings were collapsed into the piston and frozen in there so they were not sticking out of the piston at all. They were perfectly just wedged in there and frozen in there. So basically that was just lying, allowing any compression to basically blow right by the piston walls. And that's the issue right there. So uh, I basically went ahead and ordered a new piston and some rings. The pistons are $53 or the, the piston, you only have one. And then a ring set was $23. And then uh, along with the head gasket and the crankcase gasket, I'm into it about $120. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick hone because there's a bit of glazing on the, the cylinder walls. Uh, put the pistons and the rods together um, and basically throw it all together and see if we can get this guy running. So uh, anyways, that's the plan. All right, so there's a shot of our piston walls. Uh, I put a cut piece of cardboard down below because... I'm not removing the crank and that'll protect it from uh, any debris from getting down in there. So now we're just going to do a quick hone and uh, get this cleaned up. To start off, I'm going to just put some oil along the, the walls here, lube it up. This is just some regular motor oil. Next up, we're going to insert our hone there. You want to make sure it's straight. Uh, you're sitting perpendicular with the block there. And then uh, we're going to run it about medium speed going up and down. We don't want to really grind it out. We just want to just take a quick little layer off, put a nice little cross hatch into it. So we're just start this up and go up and down, up and down. Okay, let's take a look. Do a little at a time. Wipe it down. Take a look at the cross hatching. Make sure everything's looking clean. Uh, once it's just nice and symmetrical, then you're good to go. All right, so we did a nice little hone there. All those uh, shiny areas are pretty much gone. And that's what we're looking for there. A nice little cross hatch. So uh, yeah, gonna do a quick cleanup. And then uh, we're going to install that piston and get this thing together again. Here is our new piston and ring set. There's five different rings. Uh, the first two are the compression rings that are going to go in the 
two first two ring lads there. Uh, they're actually labeled 1R for first ring, 2R for the second ring. Then you have the two oil rings and then a oil spacer there that keeps those rings separated, which goes into the larger third spot there. The um, way you're going to install these are is you're going to install the spacer first. You want to make sure that the gap doesn't overlap. They should just butt against each other, but not overlap. Just want them end to end there. Once you've got that, then you can install the upper and lower oil rings, then number two, then number one. Once you have the piston rings installed, you're going to want to set the gaps to the correct positioning. Uh, you don't want any gap right above another gap. So the way you're going to do it is you're going to set the dot on the piston to 12 o'clock. Then you're going to turn the gap on the first one to the top right. And then you're going to send the second one to the bottom right, third one to the bottom left, fourth one to the, the top left, and that'll keep them staggered there. Next, we're going to measure our ring gap. And the way we're going to do that is to install the ring by itself into the cylinder, press it down with a piston head so it sits nice and flush, and then we're going to measure this gap to make sure that we're in specs. And we'll use a filler gauge and then just measure that gap. I'm using my piston to push down that ring so that way I know it's totally straight and flat and flush. There we go. Now I'll just find the, the gap there and then I'm going to measure that gap. All right, so I've got the uh, piston ring sitting about a quarter of the way from the bottom of the, uh, the cylinder there. Uh, this is our filler gauge. And I could see the uh, the gap right there, so I'm going to take the filler gauge, insert it in there, and that fits in there pretty easily. And uh, that's 0.127. Uh, 0.12 is the minimum, so we are good there. And then if I go up to 0.15, let's see how that does. Okay, that barely fits in there. So it's between 0.12 and 0.15. Uh, 0.12 is the, the minimal gap, and then 0.25 is the maximum gap. And then there's a 0.7 is the maximum service that you can use these uh, the cylinder walls at. So I'm right within specs there, so I'm gonna test the rest of them, and then uh, we'll get to assembly. All right, so all the rings are installed with the gaps in the right location. So we got top ring, bottom right, second ring, top left, so exactly opposite, and then top oil ring on the top right, and then directly across the bottom uh, oil ring. So that is ready to go. So this is going to get mounted to our connecting rod, and then it goes into the cylinder. All right, I mated the uh, connecting rod to the piston. There's two little circlips, wire clips, that hold that uh, rod on. Um, we've got new ones every time you replace those. And then uh, we're ready to install this. Uh, I've got the cap here. Uh, you could tell the direction that the cap goes because there's a mark on the top, this little insert there, and it matches this insert there, where this sides don't have it. So you know which way that cap goes on. That just snaps off and we are ready to go. Uh, you can also tell which way to put the piston on because you've got the centering dot there that will go with the 97L on this side. Nothing on that side. 97L, dot faces forward to it. So we are ready to assemble. Now before we assemble, we're going to get a healthy amount of oil around the walls as well as the crank anywhere there's going to be metal to metal contact we're just going to put a nice coating of oil on all right so we're ready to install our piston and rods uh we're all lubricated up i turn the crank so the journal is all the way towards the bottom uh we're making sure that the uh, dot on the top of the piston is facing towards the top of the motor so that's good to go. Um, normally you could use a, a ring compressor like this, but with this small um, piston here, 
and it's a small diameter it's hard to use this thing because it doesn't stay uh round but the good thing is these rings are collapsible with just your fingertips so i'm just going to squeeze and push squeeze and push don't force it and then get that down into the cylinder all right we've got the oil rings down now push that and then get it to the uh next set of rings which is going to be our compression rings i'm going to find that side should be over here which it is and we're just going to slowly get it to the edge compress it pop it down into the cylinder push it down and just keep going like that all right we got the oil seals down and then we're right up against the uh, second set of rings there so i'm going to compress and tap there we go get it down to the top compression ring that should be on this side over here Let's turn it to where it's supposed to be right there and squeeze that gap there it goes all right don't want to beat on it but you can just kind of use your fingernails to push it in and then give pressure and in it goes so now we have to go on the inside and put the connecting rod bolts and we are good to go all right so we're going to put our rod end cap on now we just want to make sure that we do this little protruding spot it goes to the protruding spot plain side plain side matches there and then it snaps in and we can put the bolts in and we'll be good to go there put our two bolts torque them down and we are ready to put this motor back together again we're going to torque the uh, connecting rods two steps uh, five newton meters first and then 10 newton meters finished so i've done the five there and you just got to kind of manipulate where the rod bolts are so you can get your wrench to fit but you can get it there it goes okay we are done nice now we could do a quick test drive make sure there's no binding in there you can hear the rings running against that cross hatch that's good nice and smooth running along the top there bam no slop and that's what we want now before we start the assembly the only internal adjustment we need to do is line up the crankshaft with the crankshaft uh, you can see there's a little dot on this tooth here on the crankshaft and there's a dot here on this wheel here so we want those both to line up right next to each other so dot to dot tooth to tooth there so we know we're in alignment we're at top dead center dot to dot so the crank and the camshaft are lined up with the piston so now we're ready to assemble all right so we have our short block with the new piston and rings all set up uh, i've also gone through the head here uh, surfaced it and uh, lapped the valves all right i've got the sandpaper on the table on a flat surface got the head facing down and then i'm just going to kind of rub it Hit it at different angles because I want a cross hatch. I don't want a, a singular groove going in one direction. Normally, if I had a bigger sheet, you can do a, a figure eight to make sure it's hitting every direction, but I'm just going to twist it. I use a wire brush head on a drill. Um, I installed the valves in to protect the little walls where they, uh, they connect. And then uh, spray some WD 40 on there, let it soak a bit, and just hit it with this brush. For these valves, there's some uh, heavy deposits underneath here and along the stem. 
a little bit up on top that wire wheel hit not knocked off most of it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert, insert the stem into my drill and so now it'll spin it uh, throw some WD-40 on a brill pad here and then uh, just run like that and quick little cleaning there hit both sides of it and just knock off some of this gunk and then uh, we'll be ready to assemble Now every once in a while I'll lift the valve up, turn it, reseat it, and get a new grinding spot. Lift it, turn it, drop it back down, and keep hitting it like that. Alright, I've got it set up so this side starts pushing on that side. I've got this big old U-clamp there, and then we've got this head which has an opening where I could insert the uh, valve stems. Now there is a problem with this head itself. Uh, I'll show you some uh, video of it later, but it is super pitted up the whole thing, either from uh, pre-ignition or something got in there and just banged all over it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and just assemble it with this head and get it running and going forward with it. However, I do have the original head, which is in a lot better condition, with the exception it had a bent valve in it that was stuck in there. And in order to get that valve out, I had to damage the uh, valve guide. But what I think I'll do is while I've got this one going and running, I'm going to rebuild that other head because it's in a lot better condition. Replace the valves, replace the one uh, valve guide. And then uh, once I've got that complete, I'm going to do another video which will be a complete step-by-step -step how to tear down this motor, uh, swap out the heads, and then reassemble everything step-by-step, -step, a separate video. So on this one, I'm just kind of going to put it all together again. I'll show you a few key areas to look at, but that next video will be step-by-step-by-step. -by -step -by -step. So anyways, let's get going. All right, you can take a look at the pitting on this head here. The combustion chamber it just got smashed so it's in not very good condition but i can get it to work to just get this thing fired up like i said uh the other one i'm going to just replace the valves one of the valve stems that's inside there and then it's in really good condition yes but for now let's get this guy put together now the key thing to remember with this is that in order to change a head gasket you have to take the head and the top part of the crankcase off in order to do it correctly. So when we're installing it, the head goes on first. Oops, it's gonna go this way. And then once this is on here, then your gasket and your crankcase is gonna go on top of that. So this goes here and like that. Here. Tap it. There, uh, we'll get these heads torqued down, then run the gasket, and then the other half of the crankcase goes on top of it. Now, for the head bolts, there's four of them. They're actually 12 point heads, and the two that are down inside the, uh, the head uh, requires a deep 12 point socket. So, this is not something everybody has. So, I had to special order this in in order to be able to get those two inside bolts out. I'm just going to dump a little bit of oil around there. Moving parts. Uh, now we're going to put the uh, top case on the over the bottom case. Uh, pretty simple. There's nothing really else going on there. And we just want to line it up. And we just don't want to force it. Now there's only one trick that I learned. Is that the oil pump has to be perfect which is here and uh, there's a shaft and it has to line up in order for the case to drop into it so if it doesn't just slide all the way down and it, you could feel it butting against something just got to take this cover off and then that'll give the relief for you to set the case down and then you could wiggle the uh, shaft a little bit and then just install the cover here for the oil pump but that's pretty much it so we're just going to play with it here see if we can get it to, to go down on its own uh, 
There it goes. There it goes. And this last part, that's the oil pump that's catching. So I've got about a quarter of an inch to go down. And it's just that shaft not uh, lining up. I'm going to try jiggling it in case I'm close. Tapping just in case I'm close. But now I'm going to take this cover off and then set it down. All right, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see this hole is keyed. It's got a flat spot on one side of the circle there. So in order for the case to go down, that has to be perfect. So you see how it popped up? So we're going to take that off. We're going to find the correct alignment. Get the flat spot with the flat spot. That goes down. Our case is all the way down. And now we just got to bolt it up and we're good to go. Easy peasy. All right, we've got the uh, crankcase all bolted together. Uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, you just do it in kind of a star pattern. And it's a uh, 10 Newton meter in Torx. And uh, this is done here. Uh, last thing I'm gonna do is put the push rods in. Uh, the things I do so that I don't have to keep adjusting them is I'll push down on the uh, valve spring like that and then I can remove the push rod without unbolting this. So these should stay pretty much in uh, the right gappage. So uh, let me throw those on and I'll probably do a quick check just to make sure. So all I'm going to do is take the push rod, stick it into the cup that's in there. So that's done. And then it's pretty close so I'm just going to push down on the rocker arm and shove that into the uh, cup on the rocker arm. And that's all there is to it. And we'll do the other side real quick. And there we go. And we're all set. Uh, should still be on uh, top dead center. I could look down the uh, spark plug hole, see the piston still there. So I could do a quick uh, valve adjustment and make sure that it's still correct. And then I could put the valve cover on and uh, we're ready to install this baby. All right, valve's done, valve cover's on. Um, I think I could put some of the accessories on like the carburetor and flex plate. Maybe even the gas can, the, the gas container. And then everything else I think bolts on afterwards, like the pull start. So let me knock those off and then we will be done with that. Then we've got this flywheel flex plate thing. Only goes on one way. Alright, with our long block complete, we went ahead and dropped it down. Only thing you have to align is the main shaft that comes up. It's splined, sticks out the bottom. You just got to line it up with the crankshaft to make sure it just drops straight down. Otherwise, there's a lot of points where you can see where it uh, lines up and a couple of studs that it sits on. So, not very difficult there. Um, underneath, there's nine bolts. I left them unbolted in, but you got one two, three, four, five, there's six, seven, and then there's one kind of hidden on this side. There's eight right here and then nine right there. The way you access that one is there is a hole in the uh, bottom of this plate right here where you can get your socket to get to it. So other than that, um, only stuff you want to make sure is that all your cables are rooted out of the way. So you just have them pointed out. Got the choke, got the electronics kind of hanging out on this side. Um, the fuel line, this one line that runs here goes underneath the motor and then comes back and then plugs into the fuel pump. 
you just want to make sure that that is lying underneath before you drop the motor so it's a little bit easier you can still plumb it through it's not too bad but easier just to put it down before you drop the motor and outside of that now it's just a matter of tightening up the bottom and then uh, putting on all the component pieces so let's get that knocked out here's a trick for doing the ignition uh, I use a business card since it's flexible there's two points of contact or close contact that you have to align so that they are parallel to the curved edge, but you want to make sure it's not hitting. So I put the business card in there, put the bolts in loosely, and then go ahead and push the mount right up against the, uh, the edge there. You don't have to jam it just so they're both touching. Then you tie it down and then just pull out the card and then you've got that perfect gap on both of them all at once uh, versus trying to do one at a time with a feeler gauge it's really hard to do this makes it a lot easier and now you have the perfect gap on uh, both of them so you don't have to worry about them hitting all right uh, rooting the throttle cables they actually come off the handle go around it does a u-turn you want to make sure it's in between this little vent pipe thing here underneath there so it goes down and then comes back around on the same side it's going to bolt one to this little wing here that the uh, pull starter bolts to and then this other piece bolts to the carburetor there right there but uh i'm going to put the uh, pull start on first and then bolt these down like always take a video of it pictures whatever uh, before you start disassembly so you can see how all these things are rooted it makes it a lot easier next goes the pull starter got to make sure you have the electronics on first run your wires so they're out of the way and then just drop the starter in place there we go and this has one two three bolts with the one on this side having to put the linkage underneath it before you bolt it down so i'll get that tightened up all right throttle linkage goes on the bolt that actually holds the, the one of the two bolts that holds the carburetor on holds that linkage that goes in now to do the linkage make sure your throttle is turned down or off basically then you've got a nubby on one side so this is slotted and then on one side it has a cup for the end piece there so just get the cup on the outside, turn it in, drop the cable in the slot, and then that's how it stops there and do that on both sides here. Um, you have to turn the cable the other direction to get enough flex for the other side. And then there you go. And that's our throttle cable there. Okay, then choke. Drop that in the hole, and it's got a plastic snap that locks it in place. And that is our throttle, and that is our choke. Good to go. Second to last is this uh, fuel can cover, or bottom piece for it. Uh, it's got two rubber stoppers here. It goes with those clips there, and then this stubby fits into this hole. It's got this big hole for our fuel valve there. So what we're going to do is get these two rubber pieces started they just slide in there this is the only figgly piece that is on this motor but once you got those lined up push them in drops down there you go fuel line can come over the top that's going to be plugged into the side over here and this is going to go to our fuel and uh, fuel can and that's ready to mount up Next, we've got our fuel tank. Uh, got three bolts here. One, two, three. Uh, only odd thing you have to look out for, you see this little rod, it's slotted, and then it fits in that slot there. So you want to line up the bolts, but make sure that this lines up with that. So you have to turn the knob on the fuel underneath to make sure it's the same angle. And then you can drop it in. Drop it down, get the holes lined up. But before you start tightening it down, you want to make sure that that piece is lining up. There we go. 
get these lined up, get them started. All right, fuel system's done. Just remember their insert washers have to go from underneath, uh, three of those there. Uh, you wanna make sure when you're lowering it down that you uh, um, make sure that this arm lines up there. You can see how it fits in the slot there. And that controls your on off valve for your fuel. So you wanna make sure that works correctly there. Um, running this fuel line, is, there's three different lines here or four different lines you have to watch out for. One here, you wanna hook that up. That goes from your fuel tank and then feeds this line here. Uh, then that line goes underneath all this stuff and comes back over here. And that goes to your fuel pump. Then it goes out underneath the tank to this line. And both of these feed over here to the carburetors there. So you wanna make sure all that's hooked up. Uh, this extra line here is for an auxiliary tank. So if you have like a five gallon separate tank, you could just plug the insert into there. And then you have to switch this nozzle from the tank that goes here to this one, which will go to that tank. So that is the fuel system there. A little bit pain in the butt, but I also went through and fixed this, cleaned out all these lines, put a new filter filter on it, and uh, I've tested it and it flows fuel good now. So I know it works. I know the fuel pump works, so we're good to go there. So one more thing is this linkage and then we're good to go. All right, last but not least is our shifter neutral safety switch. This cable here, this is the adjustment for it. This goes in there and we'll tighten that up and get it snug. Okay, and then this cable runs through here, get it snugged up. Wire goes through this bracket and then insert the head in there. Like that. Then this cable, I mean this spring actually goes on the outside of this lever. Okay, so in order to get it work, you got to pull it back. It's slotted on this one side. So you can slip the cable in there. And the spring fits in that little plastic piece. And then that's the stopper there. And that is your neutral safety switch there. So if it's in gear, it locks up the starter here. And the only way it'll work is if you put it in neutral. And then it works. There you go. And then there's a little pointer here that you can use to uh, do your adjustment to make sure that it works. But that is it. I think we are done. Put the cover, oil, gas, spark plug, and that's it. And that is it. We are all together. No extra parts, no missing parts, all good. So let's take this outside, see if we can get it fired up, broken in. All right, we're all set up here, um, got oil in it. Let me run the fuel, see at the fuel pump, make sure there's fuel going to the carburetor. And then we'll do some test pulls on it. All right, let me pull a few times, see if we get any fuel to the filter here. It's over the fuel tube there, so all right, let me get some water in there and let's try firing it up. All right, I think we're good to go, so let's uh give this guy a test pull here. Throw some choke, throw a little gas. Oh man, nice. <laughs> Second pull. Holy crap, that's good. All right. We're working. Bam. <laughs> Got no smoke. We're peeing really good. Good pee flow. We'll do a nice little break in. 
fuel's running good. Got oil pressure. I see oil pushing through. bucket. Nice. Got a little bit of pop there I got to take a look at. Need to go through this carburetor most likely. I bet you it pushed junk through there. Oh, we're leaking. Yeah, I bet you that float is sticking. But it's running. Sweet. Second pull. <laughs> nice. Well, there we go. It works. It fires. It runs. Um, I checked the oil, no leaks there, check the inside oil, no discoloration, so we don't have any water or anything getting in there. It's not all aerated, so I don't think we're gonna have an issue there. Uh, no fuel leaks on this side. Uh, that uh, low idle popping and stuff, I think the, uh, the float bowl is flooding it. You can see it's still leaking there, coming out of that weep hole, so. But uh, as I, I rev it up, getting the RPMs where it's actually using the fuel, then it uh, flattens out, it runs smooth, loses that pop. So definitely have to go through this carb here. See what the issue is there. It's still leaking like this. Yeah, bummer. But damn, happy, happy. All right, I think I'm gonna cut the video off there. It's up and running, got some fine tuning to do. Um, I'm going to do a full series on the breakdown of this motor, all the different components, just like I do with the little 2.5 horsepower ones, uh, how to fix and diagnose all the different issues with these motors. So uh, I'll be doing a separate video on tearing down the carburetor next. I don't know if I'll add it right away, but once I got this running, then I'll probably release it then. Uh, short term, get the carburetor fixed. I need the, uh, the clamp screw in the handle so I could tension this down. But uh, I think in the meantime, I'll do the car first and then I'll throw it on the kayak and just put some miles on it, just get it uh, running and see how it works on there. It's a little bit heavy for my kayak, but at least I'll be able to see it working. And then uh, go through, fix those things. Then uh, I'll do a video about uh, this head here, uh, since it's in really good condition, except for the one uh, uh, exhaust valve there that I have to replace. And then uh, I'll tear the motor down again, but do step by step so you can see all the different steps how to do it. And then uh, reassemble the same thing and then uh, go from there. Maybe move down to the, the lower unit, uh, water pump and power, all the basic maintenance stuff. But uh, there you go. So anyways, it runs. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.